Hey y'all, it's your girl Jimmy and welcome back to my channel. This is what we've been waiting for. This is why I created my YouTube channel. It is time to recap X on the Beach, Peak of Love. We got a two hour premiere last night. That's how you know this season's about to be good because MTV canceled ridiculousness for an hour and gave us two hours. So you know what y'all, it's time to get this party started. I got a lot of thoughts. Make sure you have a lot of wine. The show might be called X on the Beach, but we are on no beach. We are in New Zealand, baby. We are no longer in Malibu. We are moving the party to New Zealand. It's gonna be cold and it's gonna be good. And let's just start with what matters the most. Adore Delano. Who at MTV secured this bag? because they need a raise first thing Monday morning. I did not know Adore prior to meeting her on the peak. Confession, I am not a RuPaul Drag Race viewer. Now that I've met Adore, I am going to watch. I am a fan. But I just want to say whoever at MTV got a real celebrity like Adore to sign on, cheers to you. And in the words of Adore, party! She's gonna be the star of the show. Spoiler alert, she's the queen of the chalet. But there are some more queens coming. Georgia, Steele, the only Georgia we acknowledge. Little challenge shade for the challenge fans. Queen of Love Island, one of the prettiest humans I've ever, ever laid my eyes on. Georgia's coming with a lot of baggage though, like one of her exes is arriving. That's gonna be a lot of drama. I'm curious to see um, what side of Georgia we get in the peak. And then we have <laughs> Staten Island's trash bag, Nicole Zanata. Nicole acts like a whole boy, for a better lack of the word, on the challenge. Literally, we're on a show competing for money, all about competition, and Nicole still somehow hooks up with everyone in the house. So how do you expect her to act on a dating show? Everyone knew what they would expect from her and you know she's gonna deliver in typical Nicole fashion. Callum, I don't watch any UK shows so I, I don't know anything about him. We have to talk about his teeth. That's all everyone talked about the whole episode. Every time Callum came up on the screen, like shot to a door or someone else talking about the teeth. I don't know how much he paid for that, but money well spent Callum. He's apparently a serial cheater. Him and Nicole have something in common, so they're probably gonna be friends. And day one, he has his eye on Georgia. So let's see how that plays out. Let's go to my ex, Marlon. We haven't seen him on MTV since 2013. So he's had a hiatus from television. I know Marlon better than anyone, obviously, and I know how he's gonna act in this house. And from episode one, he's acting exactly how I expected him to act. So yeah, Marlon, why are you being so thirsty? Just kidding, that's my boy. I'm not gonna talk too much <laughs> yet. Speaking of Marlon being thirsty, hello, LaDemi, the missing Kardashian. Honestly, LaDemi looks better than the Kardashians. I said what I said and I meant it. Let's play a little game with LaDemi. Every episode when LaDemi changes her wig, take a shot. I'm sorry for how drunk you're gonna get because sister had a whole suitcase full of wigs. Her wigs probably cost more than most of y'all's apartments, but that's just the truth. Allie, little Nickelodeon. Man, MTV is just casting anybody these days. We got a whole Nickelodeon child star on this show. Expect a lot more from Allie. I feel like y'all have no idea. Y'all know child stars always bring the drama. Then we have Daniel. I have never met a Canadian I didn't like till I met Daniel. What in the maple syrup bullshit is going on here? This kid is as weird as he appears and that's all I'm gonna say about it for now. Tyranny, I have never technically met Tyranny yet, but we have mutual friends and Tyranny is just exactly what you would expect from a girl that works at Twin Peaks straight out of Augusta, Georgia. She hunts bison or bison. 
I don't even know what she was saying, and I'm from Mississippi. So poor Callum trying to have a conversation with this girl and has no idea what Tyranny's saying. Sis, I didn't know what you were talking about, and we're from the same neck of the woods. It's going to be interesting to see little Miss T try to find some love this season on the peak. Didn't work out for her on Ari the One. We'll see how it works out on the peak. Who am I forgetting? Oh, Ryan. <laughs> so I, I said that I wasn't going to tell any stories about me being on the peak until I arrived at the peak. But the Ryan story, I just have to tell y'all. My first night on the peak, I look at Ryan. I'm like, hi, can I have another glass of wine? Because fun fact, like production assistants have to bring us our wine. Like we hand them our glass, they go pour it downstairs, they bring it back. And he was like, I'm not production. I was like, then who the are you? He's like, I'm on the cast. I'm like, what cast? Dead ass had no clue this man was on the show. So yeah, that was my first impression of Ryan. And y'all are probably watching this recap like, who's Ryan? Yeah, same, didn't know, still don't. <laughs> God, if I forgot someone, that's very embarrassing for them, not for me. The singles move in the house. I don't know what show they think they're on. Fun fact, we call the house the chalet. So anytime that you hear the word chalet, that's how we refer to our house. There's also some songs about the chalet. Like, y'all should tweet at La Demi and be like, Jimmy said in her recap that there's a song about the chalet and y'all should get her to sing it to you because La Demi singing the I'll F your man in the chalet song. Oh, I'm spilling my wine thinking about it. Foreshadowing maybe. A lot's about to go down in the chalet. Everyone's getting to know each other. Everyone's filling each other out. I mean, you can't expect to cast Georgia Still from Love Island and not have a love connection night one. Callum has his eye on Georgia. Apparently he slid in her DMs before. He claim to not remember uh it's because she probably left you on red brother <laughs> he literally was like oh yeah we have mutual friends and george is like and you slid in my dms and he's like what did i say and in the cutest little voice she's like hello and i'm like that's that's your pickup line callum but i guess when you look as beautiful as him hello can be your pickup line so shout out to callum for shooting his shot so we had that first love connection and then nicole Cannot be outdone, and she is mingling with Allie. Allie's making it very clear that she's never really been with a woman, dated a woman, but Nicole, I wouldn't be doing this recap justice if I didn't say, been there, done that. Allie, I get it. I understand the power that is Nicole Zanata, hence why she's kind of my ex too. Yeah, I have two exes on the peak, no one judge. Well, my mom's judging, but that's a whole different story. No one's talking to Daniel. Does anyone know where Ryan is? <sighs> I'm just waiting for Marlon to do something because I know my ex like the back of my hand and he wastes no time. I knew from the moment that Ladimi walked up, I was like, yep, Marlon, that he's gonna like that. The Yeti appears. I still don't know what a Yeti is. And like, I, like why is that, is that an animal? I'm just like, oh, it's someone in a bear suit. But I guess a Yeti's an animal. I still don't understand that. The Yeti shows up with the iPad, icicle pad. I actually don't know the name of it. Um, icicle, ice, I don't know. Jay Challenge was like, what's the name of the, of the iPad? I'm like, babe, I have no idea. And Jay's like, you're on the show. And I'm like, still don't know. The door reads about a priest. A preski, I don't know how to pronounce it. None of them know how to pronounce it. I knew it was a party. How do you actually pronounce it? My videographer's um culture, so I bet he knows how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? A preski. Yes. You know what I thought about when I saw a preski appear on the screen? There's a club in New Orleans called A Prey. Fun fact if you're in town on a Sunday and the Saints win, all the Saints players are there. So if you're trying to catch you a Saints player, there you go. So, a pre. How do you say it again? A pre. Whew. A ski. A ski. It's happening. No one knows what it is. Um, in the words of a door party. So, they all go, and Georgia and Callum are, you know, they look like they in love already. Nicole's found her next victim in Allie. Like, people are vibing. And then 
in the most extra fur coat I've ever seen in my life, straight out of New Orleans, Romeo Miller appears. Little Romeo. Oh, he's so fine. Anyway, everyone's face just drops because, wait, isn't he the host of X on the beach? But this isn't a beach. This is a mountain. So what you doing here, boo? He informs the 10 singles, you are now on X on the beach. Peak of love. And did anyone else notice peak of love was done in a voiceover? Because the original name of the show was supposed to be X on the peak. I call that. Cue the X's skiing, snowboarding down the mountain. Who is going to appear first? Oh, is that Laurel? Nicole, you're getting exactly what you deserve right now. The first ex to appear on Peak of Love is none other than Laurel, the queen of the challenge herself. Y'all, the way that Nicole tossed an alley off of her lap, I died, y'all. And I was told that this happened, that... Nicole tossed Allie, but until you see it, I could not breathe. And this is just proof that Nicole is scared of Laurel. And then Laurel appears and it's like, everyone's scared of me. I don't know why. It's like, Laurel, you're scary. Like, own it, sis. I wish I was as scary as you. Do you know how much shit I would talk if I was as scary as Laurel? That's a whole nother story. The truth is Nicole cheated on Laurel. They have a lot of unfinished business. This is going to get good. I promise you that. Let's look around. Who's who's happy right now? Callum and Georgia. So who else to bring than Callum's ex? I got a lot of <laughs> to say about Megan. I also have to get my pillow because she's too expensive to be throwing like that. So Megan and her lip liner have arrived at the peak. And she says she's here for revenge. I love to hear the reasoning for people saying they came. Megan says she's here for revenge. She doesn't want Callum back. She's here for revenge. Okay, sis. Duly noted. Callum does not look happy to see her. I don't blame you, babe. I wouldn't be happy to see this girl either. She's telling a bunch of stories about how he's cheated on every one of his girlfriends. I feel for you. But you say you're here for revenge, so you and Callum get a little bit of a long time and... Your narrative is changing. Now you are trying to get back with Callum? I'm confused. You know what? I'm just have to keep watching. So the exes are moving into the chalet. It's about to get real. And Daniel, who described himself in his intro as a pot stirrer. He loves to stir the pot. As someone that's won awards on the challenge for stirring the pot, I would just like to say Daniel does not stir the pot. Daniel's a certified hater. I would just like to clarify that. Why are you coming for Callum so hard right now? Are you are you a little salty that George is feeling him and not you? This is not going to end well. These two are about to go head to head. Daniel makes the comment about Callum's fake teeth. Maybe Daniel has some insecurities and that's why he's acting like a whole f***ing fool. Marlon shares, I'm so proud of him. Like he shares his truth about how he doesn't really have a relationship with his father because he's bisexual and I love that he's so honest and open. I think that we need to see more men like Marlon. Cheers to you, Marlon. Yeah, it's a dating show and yeah, we're all people that just love to get drunk and have fun and talk shit, but you're gonna get some real stories this season. So I'm very happy that y'all are gonna get to see that. I'm not really gonna go in order right now. I'm just gonna talk about what I thought was the best part and it was LaDemi sharing her story with Georgia. So LaDemi makes a comment about being trans and Georgia's completely caught off guard. I love that LaDemi had the strength to share this story. We got a very small portion. LaDemi mentions that after her dad passed away, she knew that she had to live her life on her terms and she decided to transition. And I literally text LaDemi when this was airing and I was like, thank you for sharing this story. There are so many young boys, young girls sitting at home that don't feel comfortable in their body and seeing someone as badass as you on MTV talking about it. So just cheers to LaDemi for having the strength to share her story. There was some also some drama. And I'm just going to go straight to it. Um, Callum was leaving the bed and Megan, who's there for revenge, she is literally like shaking him, poking him, for a better lack of a word, harassing this man as he fake sleeps to avoid her. 
and y'all, whatever. We've all been drunk and like tried to hook up with our ex. I'm not judging her for that. I'm judging her for those pajamas she wore while doing it. She literally is wearing the pajamas that her grandmother gave her for her 15th birthday. I have never been like secondhand embarrassment for someone. Like sis, you are now in a house competing with Georgia Steel and you're gonna wear those pajamas? Where is your lingerie? Insert her in that attire. Sis, between those pajamas and that lip liner, <laughs> girl. So is he really a cheater? Because you're his ex-girlfriend, he could have you like this, but he is avoiding that because he has real feelings for Georgia. So now we're seeing that maybe Callum, the serial cheater, can be faithful. Marlon is making a move on LaDemi. He plans their little date and LaDemi makes the comment with a visual, you know men love visuals, and she says, do not put all of your eggs in the same basket. Watching as a viewer, not as Marlon's ex. I'm like, LaDemi, just tell him your truth. Like, he's the most accepting person in this house. Like, you have no idea what he's been through, but just share your truth with him. She was a little scared in that moment, so she did what most of us do and reflect. Flash forward to Nicole and Laurel are having a conversation outside and y'all, I dead ass have no idea what they said to each other because all I could focus on was Nicole's transition glasses. Like one minute they were sunglasses, one minute they were regular glasses. Oh my God, I was so embarrassed by these glasses. So Nicole and Laurel are having a conversation and Laurel is trying to take some of the blame Laurel, none of that was your fault. Like, you did nothing wrong in that relationship. Do not let yourself think that you did anything wrong. You are one of the baddest I know. You are strong, you're amazing. But I get it, when you love someone, you want to make up for their flaws. So we're seeing a very vulnerable side of Laurel. If she was just very honest and open, and I respect her for that. So then Laurel and, and Nicole are in the confessional and they're making out and you're like, yup, here she goes. Laurel's back under Nicole's spell. And then I like take a sip of wine, I look up, and then it's Nicole and Allie making out in the confessional, and it's just, it's unreal. Nicole sees Marlon and Laurel speaking. Nicole and LaDemi decide to confront Marlon, and LaDemi girl, you just told him not to put all his eggs in one basket, so isn't he allowed to do this? He's just exploring his options. Literally taking the advice that you gave him. The episode ends with LaDemi breaking the ice sculpture and her and Marlon just being in a huge fight. And I think this is just foreshadowing for the drama that is to come on X on the Peak. Jack looked like a whole model coming up on that peak. And it was interesting to see him and Adore immediately kind of fall back into whatever love or lust that they have. The season premiere has officially come and went. Episode three will be Thursday on MTV, 9, 8 central. We're gonna see how that fight with LaDemi and Marlon played out. And I bet some more exes are coming, so make sure you tune into the episode and then tune into my recap. Jimmy explains it all.